So I don't know. I know when you started, when you came on stage that night, I don't know if it was the set or you're kind of mentioned that you're, well, I'm already drunk or something. <laughs> well, no, I mean, I was, I say, you know, you try to like foster Brooks it a little bit, but I, okay. That's what I was wondering. But also I did, I mean, coming out of COVID, I just started going crazy. And I, I don't think I had beers to shotgun in Chicago and it became like a thing where I was like, all right, I'm not going to do that. And then I went up and I just went into my act, which was fine. Everyone laughed and stuff, but I was like, it didn't feel mm. as fun. I think if I remember right, they, Chicago only had glass bottles. So you could, no, I chugged it. So yeah, yeah you so chugged then, one of them. I'm yeah. saying, so after the, th- after Thursday night, I go, I got to So Friday night I came in and I did the, I was like, well, I can just chug a Miller light out of a bottle. It takes a little longer. And it's bubbly. It's like (laughs) so not fun, but I can do it. (laughs) And so I was like, I'll just do that because I just missed like there was something about shotgunning a beer at the start of every show. Like it's so hack to do it. And I don't really give a shit because I was like, I'm I sold the tickets. I don't care anymore. I'm not (laughs) precious about it. COVID almost ruined my life. And so I'm doing whatever I want. But there's something like electric about the way the people like cheer when you do that. And then they're already like hyped you know what i mean so the yeah. first oh, joke yeah. just hits harder for some reason like it's just like whereas if you come out there like you know still kind of gearing up to you and they don't but it, it's like you make them make a bunch of noise and then they feel a little less um inhibited to laugh maybe or something but it is fucking it's cheap but it's something that i go like it just is something that exists so i go i don't fucking care welcome fellow leshes come on in pull up a bar stool and enjoy some cocktails with dimples and the beard. Boobs. The best boobs in Boston bounce beautifully. So let me get this straight. You're a bartender. You got a liquor license. I got it. For the rock. I had to corn festival. Test. And you had to pass. 80%. And you, want, and you got an 80%. 104. It's not possible. I gave 110%, coach. <laughs> no, you didn't. I gave 104%. You gave 104%. Okay. I gave 88%. Well, that's good. So you're going to fucking... Oops. So you're going to bartend at the Rock and Corn Festival, which is in New London on Saturday, August 12th. Go, August 12th. Go, people. Support the TBI. If you don't know what the... F- I'm talking about, go back and watch last week's podcast. What what, what number episode? Oh, 126. <laughs> froze up took me one second 126 you got it perfect yeah um coming up august 12th watch podcast find out about it go go to the web uh page facebook page instagram page rock and corn fest or traumatic brain injury fight for life team tbi fight for life team on instagram page and uh check out the cause join look for members otherwise just come out have a good time support a good cause make him make you drinks and i can mix you a drink don't Miss it. Don't miss it. I'm going to miss it. I'm going to be like cocktail. I'm going to be out there like Tom Cruise and cocktail. Oh, God. That's next year. We should do that. Yeah. We should be fucking flair cocktail or flair bartenders next year at this thing. All right. So let's go to a flair class. Learn to do flair. Are you sure you don't mean flaming? Is Tom Cruise gay? Depends on who you ask. I think it, I think it's anyway. Did allegedly, I, did I already say welcome back to another episode of Cocktails with Dimples and the Beard? And the tavern is now open. We got a roach scurrying in soon. Myth, the man, the, the legend. legend, Josh Potter back. Another repeater back. It's been which we are more than happy. What episode was he? Forty-five, fifty-seven. Like I said, fifty-seven. I that's a guess. So it's been almost, uh, it's been 70 some episodes. It's been a year ish since he was on, over a year since he was on. Then we went and saw him in August. August. We hung out with him. We partied with him. Almost we a year of seeing him and having we him on. We drank him under the table. <laughs> um, I'm pretty sure we'll, we'll talk about it, but I'm, I'm pretty sure we had to go home. <laughs> I know, but I'm telling you, I have to ask him about this because I saw him talking on a podcast about his weekend in Chicago and going out afterwards drinking. And not being able to keep up with the guys that he, I, I, I will too. And so he, he was there three nights. So, 
Right. It might not have been us. It could have been like, yeah, I was the night before, you loser. I mean, <laughs> you know, my ego dictates you that it was us. So, pussies. yeah. Uh, well, Either way, it was a fun night of drinking, which was a lot of drinking. And um, in addition to that, we did a lot of drinking. And then uh, I can't hear because of the fuck. Damn it. We're, we're not redoing that again. Just hurry back. I'll sing them a song. Sing them a song. Beautiful Boston boobies bouncing beautifully. The best boobs in bo- the best boobs in Boston bounce beautifully. The best boobs in Boston bounce beautifully. All right. The bartender's back. The bartender went to check out the best boobs in Boston. They were bouncing beautifully. They were beautiful. Fernando, why didn't you turn the air off? You're, you know, you're not fired. Just kidding. He claims he was busy. He says he was busy. Fernando. Okay, we're here to help. We're helping too. It is nice to have a producer finally. He's doing a great job. I know. He is doing a great job. He's doing I forgot the word. If you have any Bang up job. If you have any issues with the uh information and the um the uh the accuracy of the information that is spewed from this podcast, please contact Fernando at Fernando G- dot cocktails with dimples in the beard at Gmail Gmail dot dot Fernando. Dot com. Dot com. He's he, got his own internet. His his uh he you know, his own his own web. His response time is ten minutes or less. So or you get it free. Send him a message. He, you get Fernando for free. You get it for free. I don't think we can sell you Fernando. Oh, it's, it's for free. Oh, yeah, good point. I don't think we can give him away. Anyway, the road is <laughs> back. <laughs> Jesus Christ. All right. Besides all this malarkey that's going on right malarkey. now um do us a favor like what they do subscribe leave a comment share Ooh. means the world or us cost you nothing means world rooters. i slurred a little bit there you did that's okay what should they call us maybe they should call us uh roach fuckers <laughs> It's going to incorporate Roach into it somehow, too. I don't know that I went with Roach, fucker. Roach, Roach, um, Roach. I guess it'd be, it'd be right up your alley, but it, I need a big your Roach. <laughs> Papa, what is, what is, what is this? Oh, Roach subjects. How about, is that what, like, somebody who follows the king is a subject? Yes. Because Josh would be king of the Roaches. So we're like he Roach subjects. He is definitely the king. He's Papa Roach. He's king of the Roaches. Papa Roach. He's, yeah, I was talking to I met I'm, sticky. I met I met Kirsten, his show producer on at the Ryan Sickler show, and we were talking about the the cockroach that she found it in her apartment that they brought into the studio that was the the the, the was the show mascot. The and mascot. then they found another one apparently in the actual studio. She was telling me they found another one. So we'll have to ask him about the roaches. Uh, and not the ones you smoke from. Well, you know, can you? I if I recall. You can Chong and Teach and Chong smoked it. Used a cockroach to smoke weed or just smoked the cockroach? Yeah. No, it's pretty funny. He was he was I sitting there. You, I asked you one or the other, what and you said yes. I don't know what you asked. I, I just know that he was a cockroach was like walking and he was playing with it. Yeah. Like and it, back and forth, kind of laughing, and then he goes and then he puts it in the pipe and he starts smoking it. Oh. I wonder if cockroach gets you high. Just like mango. Just like mango, we found that out. Smoke a mango. We're gonna smoke weed out of a mango. Well, or, I think you can just smoke the mango. How would you do that? It's wet. You're not gonna get it to light. You, you need a blowtorch. You can dry it out. Oh, you can dry. Yeah, we can smoke dried mango. Let's try that. Okay. Let's see what happens. All right. Because it's full of, you know, that thing, crystal. No, it's terpenes. Terpenes. It's full of terpenes. It's full of myrcene terpenes. You know, or you something. Want to know, hey, hey, hold on. We're not gonna tell you anymore. You want to learn about terpenes? Terpenes and all that stuff. Go check out Ash. Ask Ashley. Yeah, let the expert tell you, not us. Let, yeah, she explains it a lot better. We and just ask. We just ask a beautiful woman questions and then stare at her like we're paying attention. <laughs> <laughs> That's not true. We're paying attention. We love Ashley, but hey, it's hard. Hey, it's, hey, hey, it's hard to pay attention. Sometimes it is. Yeah. We can't Don't leave, leave a beautiful roach. <laughs> can't leave a beautiful roach waiting. You cannot. So go, out, go check out on that uh, on Ask Ashley as well, and you'll learn a lot. You want to see us allegedly rip off these bongs? <laughs> allegedly. Go watch, go watch episode four. So without further is that ado, what this is the king himself, the king of the roaches, Josh Potter. Here we go. There he is. 
What's up? Can you hear me okay? Yep, you're good. Yeah. Awesome. I just got this microphone like on my doorstep as I walked in because I ordered <laughs> one yesterday, so I didn't know if it even worked. Cool. It's, it sounds crisp and clean. And thank you Excellent. for using us as a guinea pig. Yeah, I, I, my other one broke yesterday, so I was like, fuck, I got to get another one. So I oh. Amazoned one, and it, when I just walked in, it was at my door. So they, they droned it over and dropped it with a parachute or something? I don't know. I don't know how they do it, but I found... <laughs> I mean, it didn't come that fast. Let's not get crazy. But <laughs> well, I don't know. Like, the big cities, they do that shit, don't that, they? Well, I think they experimented with the drones for a while, and I don't think it went well. And I, <laughs> I think feel like they... it has to be in small cities, because if they had drones around here, I mean, the police helicopters would run into them. The, I mean, I live near an airport, the Burbank yeah. Airport, so it'd probably get caught up in the uh, air traffic control. It's probably for people that like live someplace where they're like, there's no drivers there. We got right. a fucking and, get up. and nobody wants to drive there. Yeah, in, yeah, yeah. <laughs> in like nowhereville, Iowa. <laughs> yeah, there's no air traffic control issues. Yeah, yeah. Speaking, speaking of Iowa, we I, isn't Kirsten. We met. I met Kirsten on Saturday night. Isn't she yeah, she on? said she mentioned that. Yeah, yeah. She said you were at uh, what was it Skyline, right? Yeah, Ryan Sickler's show. I got to meet Ryan. Yeah. I said, I said, now I've officially met the two nicest guys in comedy with you and Ryan. So. <laughs> It's crazy nice. that you guys work out of like this or work out of the same studio, the same producer, or whatever. And you guys are like, yeah. Well, we changed. I changed studios oh, about yeah, yeah. a year ago, but Kirsten still works on the show, obviously. Yeah. So. Yeah. It's awesome. She was she was very nice. It was great to meet her. So, yeah, she's great. Yeah. And uh, Skyline, we got to get you to Skyline. Yes. I'd like to go there. We got to get a lot of places this coming year <laughs> and having some phone calls. Yeah. I already said if uh if you if you make it to Skyline in Appleton, I am basically gonna take the whole weekend off and we're just gonna come to every show and <laughs> Hell yeah. We won't sit in the front row for every show. I think that we'd 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 weird you out eventually. Like no, I think they... we should. <laughs> How far away is Appleton from Milwaukee? Hour and a half. So it's not like I'm just wondering because I did the Milwaukee improv like twice in yep. So I wonder if I, because I do that, I would, if that's why I haven't done it, but I don't know. I got to make a phone call. Yeah. I, I don't. <laughs> yeah. It was Milwaukee where you had the, uh, the bills game that you did. The, yeah. You yeah. That's everyone still on Patreon. On. Yeah. <laughs> if anyone has, wants to check it out, you uh, broadcasting the whole playoff game <laughs> to the audience. Yeah. And I put that part on Patreon, but I, what I didn't put on there is I did my whole act after it pretty much blackout drunk i mean i was up there for an hour <laughs> and i was drinking beers i'm trying to keep the crowd into a game that they have no vested interest in they're right. all packers <laughs> who just got eliminated the night before by the way by uh the 49ers and so i'm sitting there and i'm like there's no fucking way i'm not watching like the bills are in the divisional round of the playoffs right I have to go on stage as the fourth quarter starts. Like I just, there was no chance. So, I mean, I told them I got to put it on the screen. I think uh, yeah, Milwaukee, I, you know, Wisconsin's a good football state. So, yeah, I feel like I gave him a show too. You know, I didn't have the audio on, but I, I feel like I gave him a, a, a show regardless. And then I, I even said, I'm like, you guys can leave if you want, but I'm going to do my hour still. And I think I was on stage for another like hour and 10 minutes. It was the longest I've ever, I've ever been on stage. Did you feel the audience turning on you at all? ever no i mean i i felt like i walked out of there feeling like i just played madison square garden i mean i felt great i have no idea how it really was i know (laughs) i talked to the manager manager is a good buddy of mine and i talked to him after and he said it was awesome but he uh i go did anyone leave and he got a couple people because we closed their tabs oh like when we normally would have so i did an hour on top of that and they couldn't even buy booze i'm like you guys could have made some money but right no shit jesus you can't shut people in wisconsin down i didn't know that was going on it was a sunday night but so that's no. another thing there was only so now, one show thank god right <laughs> <laughs> it would have been a rough rough late show so now are you not booking any shows come playoff time now that the bills are projected to continue to do well in the next couple of months we, well years. you know what's funny is i've never even thought about that before like like you just said like the bills are projected to go in the playoffs now i've like learned my lesson yeah a little bit this last year i was fine i took i'm in it see i'm still learning how to do this shit like in terms of like uh headlining clubs and stuff because i took off 
January and February from the road. Okay. And I go, well, I'll just pick it up, you know, in the rest of the year. And uh turns out that's when you're you get the best deals. Like the summer sucks. So I sure. got a new agent. I don't know if anyone gives a shit about this. I got a new agent and he's like, I can get you in this club, this club, this club, but we should wait till after the summer because the deals will be better. And I oh, go, okay. okay. And then, but here I am, I'm sitting here. It's like July. I got nothing. And I'm like, <laughs> I just did this though. In January, you know what I'm saying? So I, yeah, right. but I, where I fucked up is I should have been going after for, I didn't have this agent th- though yet. So, gotcha. so I don't know. So I'm learning. He better did the same thing. Where he had a tour. Did he skip baseball playoffs when the Cubs were in? Yeah. yeah, when the Cubs made it, and then he was like, "Yeah, I'll never, <laughs> we'll never do a tour again during be- uh, playoff baseball." During yeah. playoff, yeah, I mean it's tough because it's February, so like, I just have to, you know, it. What's shitty is you don't know, right? Not only do you not know if they're going to be there, but you don't know like until the week of which game it's going to be. Like right. the first time I ever headlined a club was the boss, the Laugh Boston Club. And that was the first game with Josh Allen in the playoffs. We played the Houston Texans in the wild card against Deshaun Watson, and they beat us. They had that crazy one-handed DeAndre Hopkins oh, catch. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And uh, <clears throat> so that game happened to go during that weekend. And so if it was Sunday, I could have gotten home in time for it. But it's Saturday, and it's the early game. So I'm like, fuck. So it's early enough where it's like the first show starts at eight. The game starts at like four. I want to say it happened or four thirty. Sure. Yeah. Sure. <clears throat> and so my buddy who I brought with me, Matt Wayne, he's a hilarious comic out of New York. Uh, he and I were together in the hotel room watching it. And I know I'm headlining at least. So like, thank God this club is in the hotel. Oh, okay. <laughs> Lap Boston. Lap Boston like is like the plaza it's in is the hotel too. Like the hotel is attached to it. So um, I go, you know, we can get down there at the last minute, but Matt's middling. So I'm like, it went to overtime. Oh shit. (laughs) And so we're up there and overtime's about to start. And Matt has to just go out there during overtime. Uh, So he has no idea what's happening while he's on stage and it's in Boston. So no one cares. And, um, you know, I'm in the green room. I, I finally I go down like at a commercial, yeah. And uh, Deshaun Watson, like I don't know what happened, or the Texans kicked a field goal to win the game, and then they basically like, and now Josh Potter and I was like in the shittiest mood, <laughs> walking out on the stage. True, yeah. but I'll tell you, I that night though the late show, I thought I'm gonna have three people at it because it was the wild card round against, it was Tom Brady. His last game as a Patriot. It was the Patriots versus the Titans. Oh, the shit. Titans ended up beating the Patriots, but it was in New England. So I'm like playing Boston. I'm like, I'm fucked. I can't believe if this was in Buffalo, they would cancel this show. Sure, sure. sure. But it was in New England where they're used to like wild card. We don't know. <laughs> because they that year they lost to the Dolphins, who had that crazy um t- flea flicker play with Ryan. Right. Yeah. Yep. And they, they had catch. they got and that that loss put them into the wild card game, which fucked me. I thought, but I still sold a bunch of tickets. I couldn't believe how many tickets I sold huh. despite that. And I was so like, I was making fun of them. Like you fucking fair weather Fox. Like huh. you're here to see me. You have a wild card <laughs> playoff game. You're not Patriot. Turns out my fans turns out in a lot of ways, especially back then, a couple of years ago are not sports fans. <laughs> so, <laughs> I really I would, made a, I would imagine you're getting more sports fans now with all the sports you talk about. I don't podcast. think so, but nope. I, it's the thing. I think I made a shitty pivot <laughs> and didn't even realize it, but I'm convincing people to like, a lot of people have told me that. So, so what do you think? Uh, what do you think about <laughs> Rogers in your division? I'm not fucking scared of that guy. <laughs> I can't I like wait. It. I, it's going to be a fun, it's still the Jets. Like it. It's like, I really just don't. He's old. It's the Jets. Yeah. They got a lot of stuff, the Jets. I keep saying, I, I always say that about the Jets. They got a lot of stuff, but I don't know if they know how to put it all together quite yet. And I think it's going to be a, uh, I guess they're doing hard knocks. Is that a confirmed thing or is that? I just think like it is rumor? confirmed. Yeah. Is it really? Yeah. Okay. Which will ultimately lead to even more scrutiny. And it's just Rogers has such petulance for the like press yeah. already. And he was in 
Green oh, he's loving Day, it. <laughs> where he was loud. He's not loving it. He looks like he hates his, he hates it all. Like he you wants think so? he wants to be the guy that he was two years ago. Now he's like getting scrutiny already. Like even when he was in Green Bay, mm-hmm. he never had that. He was the darling. He would say something a little clever, give a smile. They're like, let's put this guy in a jeans commercial. And actresses are fucking him, and he's winning MVPs. Now they're like, "You're doing ayahuasca. You're talking about vaccines or whatever the hell he's talking about." And he's just like saying wild shit, and people are judging him already because that shitty season last season. Yeah. And now he's on the Jets, which is the harshest media market in America. <laughs> it is. So it's going to be amped up, and he's going to be one of those guys where he's like, the press doesn't get it. He's already kind of doing that. He's like the narrative oh. spinning. You know what oh, I'm really? saying? Okay, yeah. Okay. Yeah, no, he was imagine. doing that shit like with all the Guten curse stuff and Green Bay or whatever yeah, that yeah. guy's name is. He Guten was already Kust. doing that. Guten yeah. Kuss, yeah. I can't imagine how, how bad it's gonna be if they start off like oh and two or something. Oh, how well, nasty the media will get with it. Ah, it's gonna sizzle. It's gonna when be did, I can't wait. But he he's like making the rounds. I mean, he's there and yeah, he's he has already to. going to plays, he's he's going to concerts, he's going to everything, New York, he's well, he's also just doing the Hollywood thing. I can't believe yeah, he's not the Hollywood Taylor thing. Swift by this point, but uh, I think he's fucking said all, he was Aubrey Marcus, Mets. actually. Who's that? <laughs> the, guy, the guy that Joe Rogan started on it with. He did like the podcast with him when he talking about ayahuasca and shit. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah they yeah, really yeah, yeah. bro down hard. Like they. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I know that guy. <laughs> um, well, wasn't it like three Taylor Swift concerts in a, in a week or something like that? Well, yeah, she did like a residency at whatever the city bank feel which is <laughs> crazy i mean the tickets that she moves are yeah i mean it is so, so much money it's disgusting but um yeah no i mean he was like basically chilling there for every night because he's a, a mets fan i guess which no. makes no sense he's from california yeah no i didn't know that yeah i mean he i that's what he says he's like i always been a mets fan maybe because as a little kid they had like Daryl Strawberries. I don't fucking know, but it is an odd, I thought, pandery thing. I don't think he's looking like the Aaron Rodgers he looked like in Green Bay. And I don't even mean on the field. I mean, just like personality, opinion of him. Yeah. I actually think it's the best thing the Jets could have done. <laughs> Why draft one of these quarterbacks and make me fear them in any capacity? I would have been terrified of that. For Let years, them get to Aaron Rodgers and I can <laughs> cackle. They did this with Favre. Everyone's like, "Oh, Favre." Right, yeah, we were right. shitty back then, anyways. But then we would kill Favre. Yeah. And how early in the season the you Jets? How early in the season do the Bills and Jets play? We play them week one. Oh, do you really? <laughs> nice, nice. Is it a Monday? Yeah. It's got to be the Monday nighter, huh? I don't know. It might be. I think it's Monday or Sunday night or so. It's got to be a prime. It's got to be prime time. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. His certain first game in New York. Yeah. Oh. Is it? Is it in Buffalo or New York? I got to look. I Maybe I'm just like, did I dream that? Um, <laughs> you just want to see him get smeared that first week. Yeah. Crushed. Yeah. Well, also, that, that does make me like, I'd rather us play them like week nine and like get a bunch of games under our belt and see what we're looking at here. You know what I mean? Sure. Sure. Well, you're bringing Let back me a, see. I got most of your team. Yeah, September 11th, too. And we know <laughs> the Jet that Jets and September 11th don't have a great history together. So. I think for sure the Bills. It's 5.15 p.m. I think it, that makes it Sunday night football. Well, maybe it's Monday. Let me see. Okay. What yeah. day is September 11th this year? I don't, I don't know. know. Alexa? <laughs> Fernando? <laughs> Fernando? What do you got? September 11th. Monday. Monday night it's football. It's a Monday, yeah. All well, right. We're not recording oof. that night because we got to watch. <laughs> oh, Okay, we'll just it's we'll be we'll, tough. we'll podcast during it. I was gonna say, there you go, be fun. Commentate during it. Oh yeah, I yeah, that'll be cool. You you won't be you won't be recording a podcast that Monday. <laughs> You're gonna have to re- reschedule. Well, that's the thing. <laughs> I um I have I usually do mine. It varies. It's like between like two or four o'clock, and I have fucked myself when yeah. the bills are on Monday Night Football before. Yeah, uh, and I just tape it which is like the advent of this YouTube TV. Like I caught up to it, like in the second half, it was, was it the DeMar Hamlin day? That was Monday night football. Right. Cause I came home and I caught up right as DeMar Hamlin got hurt. Oh, okay. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. That was a fucking scary I wasn't night. Watching, yeah, I wasn't watching that game. So, but I, uh, I, if I was watching that on delay, I mean, I would have been fucking, that's like the guy who like 
slept through 9-11 or something like that like i would have been i couldn't i would have been like because i wasn't looking at my phone i don't want to get spoilers but i'm glad i caught up but it was such like a, i was like yes i'm caught up and then the game obviously and then it's over <laughs> yeah it's crazy well yeah so i gotta ask about that I get, is he, he playing this year who's that demar hamlin De- yeah he's uh go, or he's in camp I mean, he's on the okay. roster. I don't, I mean, he was good. Uh, he was like a good backup safety to like Micah Hyde or whatever, but, and he played a lot because we had a lot of injuries in the secondary. And like I said, he was like, Sir, I mean, I don't know what, it's going to be interesting to be like, if he has like a step back or I would think it's not even going to be like physical. It's going to be more like, he's not going to go in for those hits right. anymore. Like it's going to, he's going to be like Tom Cruise and fucking uh, Top Gun when, you know, what's his nuts is behind him sunrise or whatever the hell his name is. He's like, we could have had a man. And he's like, it's no good. It's no good. <laughs> like, I don't, if he hesitates, even like in camp, I'm sure it'll be interesting to see if the bills, cause he's become this like, yeah. Philanthropic it's almost like they, figure. Yeah. Do they cut him or do they just like kind of stash him somewhere? Cause now you can put anybody on the practice squad. Right. I, I don't but also, I don't think there's any way they can cut him this year. <laughs> I, I after everything that, that happened, I don't think they can cut him. Football's cutthroat, man. <laughs> I don't know. They, I mean, they He's can kind cut of him darling. and give him a job as like a ambassador to hospitals or whatever the fuck. <laughs> like they can employ him in other ways. Sure. Where, yeah. Yeah. But, but I mean, it'll be maybe, funny to see if he's like going in and all of a sudden he's just like, oh, hold on. <laughs> they would. I think they would. The way they'll put it is, we've given Demar the opportunity to explore options with other teams. There you go. Because they'll say something like that. There's always a good. We wanted to. There. We wanted to give Demar the chance to to explore options with other teams so that he could uh, fulfill what he thinks has not been fulfilled yet. But there's always <laughs> a place here in Buffalo for Demar. They'll do some bullshit like that. There you go. Just cutting him because they're like, there's no chance we <laughs> want this guy even as a depth position. All but, right, I got my last Buffalo question, just because maybe you can give me the inside scoop on my fantasy team. Oh boy. Okay. Is Cook going to be the man this year? Oh, yeah. He's number one r- running back. I don't know if he's But they brought in Harris. Back. He's not going to be the number one guy. It'll no, be Cook. But... All right. Because I, I, I had I picked him up right at the end of the I like Damian Harris yeah. uh, as a pickup, and I was surprised kind of that they did that. But if anything, it'll be like it's going to be split. It's going to be like backfield by committee for the most part. Like yeah. Naheem Hines is going to catch balls out of the backfield and James Mm -hmm. cook is good at catching balls out of the backfield. He'll do that too. I feel like the offense because of what happened last year and Ken Dorsey kind of got found out a little bit. I feel like it's going to, we're going to see twin backs. We're going to see, you know, a lot of screens. So I feel like James cook and Naheem Hines do that. And then Damian Harris will just be the guy that they like goal line carry and shit like that. Like third down. He'll steal all your uh, touchdowns. That's what I don't want. (laughs) Yeah. I I don't think James cook's going to be the touchdown guy. That's why I wouldn't even like touch that to be honest, but I'm not, I mean, they could, but they could be, you know, like I said, he could be Josh Allen could be like using him as a target, which makes him even more valuable. Um, which I could definitely see happening. Plus, we got that new tight end. We drafted a tight end. So, like, I feel like it's going to be, like, twin tight ends, twin backs, like, real, like, for, like, so we're not putting all the onus on Josh Allen just, like, bombing it. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Yeah. Because he was running around a lot last year. Yeah. And he got hurt. Yeah. A little bit. Yeah. So now it's protect him a little bit because he's got to have more. can't be running around, even though I like when he does. But All right. Well. Didn't didn't that didn't you didn't like that answer, did you? Not really. I didn't think so. That's just my theory. No, I didn't know if you had the inside scoop. You seem to follow. You know, I mean, you're following it more than I am, so that's where I'm. I haven't got back into that. I like to think I work for the Buffalo Bills. <laughs> <I'm just kidding. laughs> I, speaking of sports, and I see you got to kind of live out your dream job. You were like the sportscaster for the any versus. Oh uh, yeah, that was fun. <laughs> what was it, Ryan? Is his name Ryan? Yeah, Ryan. Yeah, yeah. I hope. Uh, I ha- I've heard little rumblings that they might, but I do hope they put out like the full game. Okay. Because Danny Brown and I just act. We fo- we thought we were like on television. It just <laughs> felt that way. Like there was a camera on us at all times, but like no one was around us. They were all doing stuff like all that, like interactions that they had and stuff like that. That was happening, but we had no idea what was going. Like there was no like 
Tom's going to talk to any about this or that. Like we couldn't hear what was happening on the other side. So we just like called the game as if we were on air and had no commercials. It was like, why? I mean, I said afterwards, I'm like, that was, that was a long game. And he's like, man, you know, he's like, we just talk like forever on that shit. I was like, yeah, it's, I mean, it, we didn't stop. We didn't like go like, oh, they're taking a break right now or something. You guys just, just like, kept going while they were in timeout and stuff. So let's yeah, move. <laughs> we, let's explain. I'm reading like facts. I did about. like a pre-show interview and shit. I did. I was given factoids about <laughs> the players and shit. Yeah. So any, for anybody who doesn't yeah. know, it's any uh, the for one of the producers from YMH played. What is he? The president of YMH. Yeah, Ryan's the president. Why they played in a one-on-one basketball game with some some things at stake, and Tom was Eni's coach, and Tom Segura, obviously, and uh, so and and you were one of the sportscasters, and it's there's a I don't know 15 minute video of it out there on YMH that's so uh it's pretty funny. Yeah, I, I like I said, I mean, it was like I black. I mean, it's just like any other broadcast. Like afterwards, like I couldn't tell you what I said, so it was interesting to see how they like put it together. And hearing some of the, because I don't remember. I mean, and like we talked forever. It felt like, yeah. yeah. How long of a day was that? How long were you there? Oh, it wasn't that long of a day. It was like a two-hour shoot. It wasn't okay. that bad at all. It was like maybe two, three hours. But the game, I mean, the they sewed that game up pretty. I mean, it was a lot of like, uh, you know, shitty shots and like. At one point, Ryan kept stealing the ball but couldn't chase it, so he would just knock it out of Eni's dribble and then. And he would have to go get it a lot of out of bounds. Mm. You know what I'm saying? That, yeah, it was edited to make it look like it was a quick game to 11, and they were making I mean, everything. it wasn't the most entertaining game of basketball anyone saw. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it was, <laughs> and he made some crazy shots considering, like, just knowing his history of like lack of playing basketball, the fact that he was like even just functionally, like, he looked like he played basketball. But he even said he was like, all these people who think I lied about never playing basketball it's only a compliment to me to like how hard i trained yeah, <laughs> I go, yeah, yeah, that's... He, he looked legit yeah and it's For crazy because sure. he legitimately never yeah i think he posted it, other than when he was he like posted a, a picture of him yeah with him holding the basketball when he was like eight or something like the and i did a, i did like a pre-game i mean we did like we again we acted like we we're a broadcasting and they even had us tape like you saw there was like a clip of me interviewing Tom. We yeah. taped pre-game interviews with everybody. We taped uh halftime interviews. We did like a halftime show, did like a post show. It was like at the end of it, I, I really like uh I mean you don't have anybody kind of telling you what's going on either. So like at the end, I kind of was like, Man, I am out of training for this kind of thing. I mean, we it's like a lot of talking, you know. <laughs> Yeah, it'd be cool if they put out a filling time. Pull out, put out more of an uncut thing because if you guys were doing that much stuff, they really did. I mean, like I said, I think it's yeah. maybe fifteen minutes, so it'd be cool to see more of it. If you want, yeah, I one, mean, go I check wonder. It out. I wonder if people will think I did such a good job if it if it's the whole thing. I mean, it it, it was fun to do, and uh, like I, I think we did a good enough job, but it was a lot of like. You know, I'm also running out of basketball jargon, you know, and they were doing a lot of the same thing. So I wonder how, like, bo- I mean, it'll be interesting. I would love to see the whole thing, though, someday. You don't got a call from TNT yet or anything offering you a, a job on the. <laughs> <Not after? yet. laughs> I yes, hope man. I get to do more stuff like that, though. I'm I'm looking for opportunities just to do like, because here's the thing. I would love to just like call a baseball game, any random baseball game on Patreon or something like that. But I would get sued so fucking hard. That is literally the uh, like defi- definition of like, you know, at the end of the game where they're like any unlawful usage or dissemination of this. That's what I would I would be literally. Oh, really? OK. Yeah, I would be literally doing what they say you're not allowed to do. I would be because <laughs> be... they sell television broadcasts and I'd be in radio broadcasts and I would be broadcasting the game. You know what I mean? That's <laughs> quite literally what you cannot do. And so I would get fucking so like not sued necessarily, but I'd get slapped with like a cease and desist. And there's really just no way to do it quite yet, you know, because they really have such like a a grasp on that on those broadcasting rights. And that's what I want to do is legit like quite literally broadcast the game in my way. And they would never be like, okay, you're cool while I'm doing the kind of shit that I do. So <laughs> I gotta find like something without a television's license, but then nobody can watch it. So I don't fucking know. I have no well, ESPN 
they're, I don't know. They, they fired everybody. They got to be looking for some new talent. So you never know. They may come. Calling. That'd be cool. It would just be cool to do an unfiltered, like call a major league baseball game without any sort of like filter where I could do it. Like, I, I wonder if I could do it with, like an old one or something, but even then yeah. I don't think that, I think they are ever yeah. green sort of copyright laws. You'd think there'd be a market for that where you just get two guys, like, two comedians or whatever they're, and just blasting everybody and making a funny yeah. broadcast out of it. You'd think there'd be a good market yeah, for that. Be like a, um, like major league, you know, yeah, those right. guys in the booth. You, just you the right. <laughs> yeah. There's all, all kinds of like, that's why it's still so funny to me because it's never really been done. And it would be like, it would just be kind of like, I don't know. It'd be interesting. That's for sure. And no one would, there would be an uprising about it. Obviously like players would throw a cease and desist. They're like, this guy's broadcast broadcasting the game. He's talking shit about me or something like that. You know what I mean? Like, or <laughs> so if you never mention the teams or the players names, but you, I think you can show only certain seconds of the game to just like flash the game and then talk <laughs> no it's i guess i could do highlights or something yeah, that's like, i don't know that's a snooze fest but that's not that where any... the beauty lies you know that's not where the the fun is the fun is in the mundane parts pretty pretty exciting castellano hit his uh what, home run now against every team in M major league or whatever yeah it's a lot of bad news <laughs> that uh went out there for sure <laughs> I wonder who called that that home run when he hit, who who was the who was the broadcast when he hit, well the last when he hit it or whoever whatever, whatever team he hit it against to hit it against all the you know what I mean yeah I don't know what team it was against I didn't check I didn't notice that but um he uh he's on the Phillies now and they have a pretty fun broadcast team John Crux on it so mm. Mm, okay uh, yeah he got fired from ESPN back in the day didn't he possibly. Mm. I think Crux ESPN got... fired a whole bunch of people. You're right. Yeah. Yeah. Just in the like last couple of weeks. Oh, yeah. really? They like cleaned house. Yeah. Oh. Boom, boom, boom. That I didn't know. Yeah. I I couldn't tell you who. I just know the major. Susie firing. Colbert was one of them. That's crazy. Oh, shit. She's been there forever. Uh, there's been a bunch of people that were there forever. Yeah. Like a lot. Uh, one of names. the dudes from Sports Center, like huge dude. I can't remember. He was like a secondary dude to a, but he was a, one of the main duos. Like, I don't know, in the 2000s at the least. Hmm. And he got fucking canned. It's crazy. Wow. No uh, clue. No yeah. clue. Well, you don't follow sports. It doesn't matter. I don't. I don't pay much attention to sports. I, I get all my sports news from Josh, actually, on that. Yeah, well, <laughs> I, I don't pay much attention. That's why we keep asking him because we were like trying to get caught up. <laughs> yeah. Hence just... my problems. Too <laughs> <laughs> yeah. much sports. Too much sports. <sighs> yeah. Other than sports, you know, what do you got to do to fill your day? Your podcast. Let's talk about your podcast a little bit. It's amazing. Had some good uh Chase and her sister on just recently. Oh yeah. yeah. How fun yeah, was, that was that? Fun. That was real fun. They're doing a podcast together, so I thought it'd be fun to get them both on, you know, to yeah. plug it or whatever. And I've hung out with um both of them together a bunch of times, and they're always a good time to hang out. So I thought this would be fun. And I don't usually do two guests, so was oh, a okay. Yeah. Fun time. The only time, the other time I've done two guests is Are You Garbage and KFC. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah. God, Are You Garbage? That's a great fucking podcast. Those yeah, guys are sure. awesome. Yeah. They're the best. Yeah. That is, a, that is a great podcast. But I mean, you get to know so much weird shit about people that you would never think to, to know. Oh, yeah. So. Some of the things they, they've, they always unlock core memories just like by remembering something that I forgot all of, you know what I mean? Like something from, my childhood or just even like college or yeah you know it's crazy it's like the last decade doesn't feel like much change but then you like look back to some of those things that they bring up and you're like wow are we in space <laughs> i mean what is going on <laughs> yeah when they're asking you about like where you went for pizza and where you grocery shopped and all yeah that and shit. then or like they br they brought up like blockbuster to me the one time and i had such a like a torrid affair with blockbuster and, and blockbuster is not even like if you went up to a even like a 22 year old and talked to them about blockbuster they're like what are you fucking talking yeah. about you know what i'm saying yep yeah yeah it's what is crazy. this what I'm dating a girl right now. She was born in 1997. And it's so, I go, like, this is like, you don't have any, it's like she's. Do the math real quick. <laughs> 20, 27. 
Yeah. Gosh. So cheers to you, cheers buddy. To you, buddy. <laughs> well, anyhow, she doesn't act, you know, if you met her someplace, you'd be like, well, that's not a she doesn't act like that. But then pop culture references and stuff like that. Right. Yeah. Or like, you know, yeah, music or anything. It's just like so crazy to be like, oh, you weren't even alive yet. Yeah. And like that happened. No, I work I work with some dude and and one day I did one of these at work. And if you know, friend, like it's from friends, how they would say fuck off to each other. Oh, friends. yeah, 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 yeah. And, Ross, uh, Ross's. and he was like, he was like, hey, I know that my mom and dad. <laughs> fuck you. That's funny. God damn. Well, it. the kids are all watching friends again, which I think is funny because yeah. it's uh, it's like Netflix putting friends on as like their version of like Nick at night. You know what I mean? But they have to go find it and, and they have to click on it. Whereas I just didn't have anything else to watch at nighttime so i'd watch dick van dyke or whatever the fuck you know or mary tyler moore or whatever so that was my that's why i knew pop culture references that were before my time is because right. you'd watch the eight eighty channels that exist or whatever we used to be like there's 80 channels there used to be four or whatever <laughs> now it's like there's no channels dog right. it's just whatever the fuck you want to watch yeah. you watch you know now there's youtube there's with the content there wasn't There's that much content 9, out there, it? cables let's just <laughs> it's hey, right right yeah that's interesting what were your were you a, were you a threes company fan i watched them all dude i mean there yeah. was ones that i liked and ones i didn't i wasn't like super into threes company at the time yeah. i feel like i would appreciate it more as an adult as a kid i was like all right like i didn't get the gay stuff at the time sure, sure probably yeah. or the sex i was jokes. more like yeah as a kid i liked like all in the family which was weird yeah. because it was like talking about like politics and shit and i thought that was like interesting and i like you know taxi i thought was like hilarious oh, taxi was great yeah yeah and uh what were the other ones that i really like scratched my itch i mean i was a big happy days guy fonzie was cool big fan and, and I, you know and i was i grew up in milwaukee so every you know oh yeah you'd watch you'd watch it thursday nights and have to talk about it friday you know happy sure. days liver and shirley liver and shirley yes I that was the that. biggie that yeah, I mean, a- as a kid, it was, I don't know what it was about uh, Three's Company that just didn't, like, I'd watch it, but I just didn't catch everything that sure. I think I would have caught now. And now I watch it, I go, I can't believe this shit. <laughs> right. Because, like, even now it's, like, a little bit like, whoa, did you just talk about threesomes and shit? Like, <laughs> yeah. In the, and, and some of the gay references that they yeah, would, Everything they was kind of nuanced, which was clever, but it made you kind of go, like. Yeah. I rewatched Cheers le- recently. Yeah. And there's a scene where like Sam and Diane get in a fight and Diane slaps Sam and then Sam slaps Diane. And it's not like a, it's a like supposed slap. to be. No, it's not a playful slap. It's supposed ah. to be like comedically hard. But in the moment, you're like, oh, my God, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it's crazy. We're watching abuse. <laughs> and I'm not like a I'm not like a pearl clutching guy. I I don't get offended by shit. And it didn't offend me, but it was like shocking. I don't get shocked very often. And it was like crazy. And people were cracking up. Like the studio audience was like, ah, they were oh, howling. Because yeah. yeah. it's supposed to be like comedically hard, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Never get done today. And pretty soon that episode will be taken off and never played again. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of stuff in Cheers where you go like, I mean, Ted Danson's character in Cheers, I Loved him. He's like a pro ex pro ball player. He right. has a bar. He's like the Funny. coolest guy ever. Total massage. <laughs> all the hot, yeah, he's great. Fucks all the hot chicks. But yep. then you find out, yeah, he's like, you're like, Ted Danson's kind of a scumbag, but damn. Sam Malone is awesome. Yeah. No, I mean, I meant Sam Malone. <laughs> yeah. I didn't, yeah. Sam Malone, I'm saying, is a kind of a scumbag in the show. Like, yeah, there's things you didn't catch the first time around that you go, like, it's kind of like, fucked up Sam Malone. you know what i mean like the way he talks about like <laughs> fucking girls and the way he treats but, but they play it off as a comedic thing so you, yeah but you it's like hilarious yeah, yeah but then you're but you watch it now and you're like whoo all right sam chill out you know pump the brakes dog <laughs> so my uh my old roommate years ago before you could buy dvds or streaming this that he had his goal and he had videotapes of every cheers episode that was his favorite show so he had 10 years of cheers on videotape like that he recorded that when he it was recorded on. when it was on and then dude i did that with seinfeld i taped them all and me and my friend were gonna like buy an editor and like so we can make them chronological but we had like every season on two vhs tapes and yeah. then like we and then you know i remember it was the end of seinfeld and all that it was a big deal and when we got the last one we were like i can't believe we have every episode 
Because yeah. we were taping the reruns and we we're like, we have the library. We were like the only people in the world that have every episode of Seinfeld. Yeah. And then sure enough, like DVDs came out like Boom. two years later. And my mom bought them for me for Christmas. And I remember being insulted. I'm like, this is all you I spent <laughs> I spent years like waiting at 10 o'clock every night for the syndicated episodes to come on so yep. I could get the and like figuring out which one it was and uh like cataloging them and then <laughs> he did the same thing <laughs> dvds come out and fuck me yeah he did the same thing with chairs i remember that he had them all just, and now did exactly what you did remember how much those dvds cost they were like hundreds of dollars yeah. like i want to say it was like for the seinfeld set it was like probably like 250 or something maybe it was crazy yeah now it's on fucking now even that's obsolete and it's on it's like why did i get the dvds that's on Right. Hulu or whatever right. the fuck, Peacock yeah. or whatever the fuck. But not gonna lie, I got the complete Seinfeld of DVD over there that I got for twenty nine ninety five somewhere. Oh yeah, no, after the fact too. After now you can get fact. it in a yeah. bargain bin. They're like, please take this. It's gonna end up in a <laughs> landfill. But do I ever pop it in? No, I just put it on streaming. <laughs> yeah, it's like I, I. There's something about me that is nostalgic about having like the DVD or like I used to have um like an army footlocker full of VHS movies. And it was like my holy grail. It was like, are we talking about porn or movies? No, like regular movies. (laughs) I had all like my favorite movies. And I remember like, I was like collecting them and I was like, I'd open it up and I'd just like look at them. And now it's like, I couldn't even like, I go onto these things now and it's like, I don't even know what this is. I don't know what that is. And I'm not like (laughs) picking new things to watch. So I feel like I'm in this, horrific bubble and i don't have any sort of pop culture i don't know how kids like there's got to be kids out there now that like there's no tnt to watch fried green tomatoes because that's the only thing that's on the fucking (laughs) tv you know what i'm saying like they don't have that so will they ever be exposed to like things like that that everybody ends up knowing about or whatever yeah some of those movies that you just watch it over over and over again because they were on you know weekend references are just watched a million times because it was on all the time references are going to start becoming so niche i feel like yeah Yeah, you're right. Well, the other thing, you know, nobody, we, to your point is nobody goes, hangs out at the mall in the video arcade anymore. Nope. I mean, kids don't get to experience that ever again. Well, you know, now just... they got like, yeah, but it's like, they do have a sense of community in that where they're like on their things, but it is not face to face, but I've seen kids right. go to like these crazy land parties and stuff. And that's cool. That's fine. I mean, it's like, so they're not going to the arcade or whatever, but you know, going to the mall, malls are like. They are depressing. They're like dystopian. I feel like I'm in a zombie yeah, movie every right. time I'm in one of those. Out here, like in the West Coast, there's a lot of those outdoor malls, and they don't feel as there's a, they seem to be bustling. Okay. There's like a thing about outdoor malls, but these over on the East Coast, and I know in the Midwest they have these like airplane hangar uh, esque yep. monstrosities that you walk into like a it's a prison, and they're like three floors, and there's you know a JC Penny, there's this that, but now you go into them. And it is desolate. Yeah, I went so- to the one back, one of the ma- big malls back home. It was all this DIY shit. It looked like a Etsy came to life because all these they were just giving away the fucking shops, you know? Yeah, because otherwise a third of the store, two thirds of the stores are empty. So yeah, I'm sure they just the rent they lower the rent so much that everybody's like, oh, I'll just sell my bead, my neck, my bead necklaces out yeah. of here. <laughs> it's the same rate as like a tent at a flea market by this point now <laughs> to just have a fucking storefront yeah i wonder how the mall of america is in minnesota like i don't i haven't been there for years that one's like kind of touristy so i feel like i mean while i i'm going to go out on a limb and assume attendance is lower than it used to be i'm sure that one still like survives isn't there a comedy club in there yes i've never done it they used to be so rick bronson comedy club it's still there no it isn't okay yeah i was gonna say i thought yeah i thought there was a lot there There yeah it's 100 percent still there Okay, it's, well, that's good. I remember seeing it um, years years ago. Yeah. Now, back to the old um, videotaping. <laughs> when, when we were in high school, my same mm. friend that taped all the Cheers, he also did it to Simpsons as well. But oh one my time, God. He, but at one time he gave up. He, he I literally am saying that's I, too I many. Yeah. I can't keep up. He would still be going. <laughs> right. Right. Don't they still make it new? Yeah. They still. Yeah. Okay. That's his, it. Was his point? I think he was like, I, I can't keep up. I'm and trying I, to have a family. <laughs> yeah, and I can go buy them the DVD. Yeah. But anyway, oh well, yeah, yeah. What are they on? Season so. thirty-two then? I don't know because they started in ninety-one. 
it was crazy. Yeah. I think Julian was that. You know what? I think one of those things like the Simpsons has been on as long as I've been alive. I think. Yeah. Almost yeah. or like close to it. And they should have bowed out already. And I'm not saying that because of the quality or anything like that. I'm saying that because like, I think when they do decide to end it, no one like old people will care. Yeah. The people that watch, but like, it won't be this huge thing. Like it would have been like, I'm, I'm sure Fox will do stuff and they'll make it a big deal and everything. But I feel like those things, like I said, everything gets is fractioned off so much now. Yeah. I don't think as many people would, it wouldn't be like a world event like it would have been 10 years ago or whatever. Right. Yeah. With, or the yeah, final season or yeah. something. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I don't even know how, well, I, I don't even know how I watch Fox anymore, like as a normal channel. Well, yeah. I it. mean, I guess YouTube TV <laughs> has yeah, a I Fox. don't even know how it works anymore. All I, I do, all I have is like Netflix and Amazon. I don't. Well, yeah, you got to get an antenna. Where yeah. I was going with it, that buddy of mine, if, if, anybody recalls in the 80s there was a period where they said that porn was like outlawed and within a year it was gonna they were no longer gonna could legally produce it was this in wisconsin or some shit no it was like it actually was like out of california like a law was like banded done sure sure there was something it got fought and yeah yeah yeah. didn't i think that was in the plot of boogie nights okay that, that could be. I think so. I think so. I'm gonna but the point here. is, um, we heard that, so we <laughs> started recording all the porn we could <laughs> before they banned and took everything off the shelf. That's so, funny. So we would You're we would on the weekends. It. We would rent some movies, and we didn't rent. We didn't fucking degenerate. We didn't record like the whole movie. We just recorded the good shit, and we had tapes and then we'd duplicate six hours we had like a six hour tape of just porn scenes <laughs> non-stop and then we would duplicate them to give to our buddies <laughs> because they were taking it away we used to like you know because we were in college and we would be multimedia students friends of mine used to make like used to dub porn the same way but from the internet obviously oh and then that. chop it up and make highlight reels and we'd and they'd be like this is my buddy Zach used to make boner jams, he called it. And that was Perfect. like all his favorite parts. Perfect. And he would put those in like highlight reels. But I remember like when I turned 18, for years, you know, you look forward to like, I can't wait to be 18. I'm going to buy the porn video. You know what I'm saying? Since you're like 14 or whenever you got your first boner and you're like, <laughs> and you talk about it with your friends. You're like when you're 18, you can buy porn and cigarettes and hell yeah, you know, you get excited. I don't know. Maybe kids can buy vapes now. They get excited. But like the porn thing, even by the time I was 18, it was already internet. You know what I mean? Dial up maybe or like even a little bit higher than dial up. But it wasn't as cool. But we just did it for like the nostalgia thing. Like I went and I bought a videotape at a fucking thing. Yeah. I don't think I ever watched it, you know, <laughs> and it was a videotape and I could have, you know, I, there were VCR still around, but I don't think I had one. And it was like they didn't even have DVDs yet in porn. And so... I bought it and I just was like, well, I did it. You know, <laughs> I don't know what kids even have for that now. You know, I don't think there is a thing anymore for no, that. No, no, we oh, would have to be old man in this episode. I'm like the fucking kids. We would, he would have to bring his VCR over. We'd have to hook them up together. We'd have to get someone to rent this over 18 porn, <laughs> wait for my mom to go to bed. And then we could record at like <laughs> two in the morning. <laughs> and then if she would ever come down, we would have to stop it. And then we'd have yeah, to you're watch running it. A, a bootleg business. <laughs> like essentially. It, you know, <laughs> we were bootlegging up the ass. We would, you know, the whole and then it would go backwards to start. And then we have to time it just right. Damn. Oh, fuck. Yeah, we were. And then we were, we were recorded all night long. My mom. Would get, yeah. Because we there was like there was a date. From what I remember, there was like a date. It's going to end, and they cannot rent any more porn after boom. That that porn conspiracy that could have been a lucrative <laughs> business if uh, you were just you were just you know hedging your bet. You know, if it really went through, you would have had we would have would have been able to you would have been able to sell hell yeah that shit for a lot of money. You'd have been like Jeff Bezos and then porn. fucking porn or internet came about, and well, they it didn't go through. But yeah, we yeah. we yeah yeah, we, yeah yeah we had I don't know how many six hour tapes, but we had quite a few. That we just filled up. <laughs> How much Hell porn yeah. do you need? 
We just wanted <laughs> we were we just wanted as much as possible till it was taken away. I used to tape SNL episodes because I wanted just to like watch them over and over again. Hmm. And I used to like uh re write down like what they would uh some of the sketches, but like yeah, it was the same, but it was like the same thing where you had to be like, Shh, and then someone would tape over something. And you're like, fuck, what are you doing? You get pissed off. Like, oh, there's yeah. that blurry shit in between. It's like, you just taped over Matt Foley. But you were doing, yeah, you were taking tape to tape, which is like, yeah. did it go through a screen or did it just go? It was, nope, it went to the screen. Oh, okay. So you could watch it and then record what you're watching. I see. Yeah. What an operation. Oh, it was. We, and yeah. <laughs> Should have expanded that. It was like four TVs going at the same uh, time. Yeah, we yeah, should have just like going. what year was this? Oh, this was like 83, 84. Mm. Yeah, you should have did it with movies too. <laughs> like uh, we did. aliens. <laughs> yeah, okay. we did a couple, but we were more worried about the porn. Bootleg VHS uh, <laughs> deal. Because back then you buy a videotape, it was like 90 bucks. Like For if you want to no, if you want to go buy, yeah, if you want to go buy a porn. To your point, if you want to go buy a VHS of a movie of porn or just a Caddyshack when it came out, it, it was it was like ninety bucks for a video. Yeah, show. back then it was way more expensive. Oh yeah, it was. Oh, free. Oh, that's why yeah, the business was booming. Yeah. And why they had I didn't own studios, right? I didn't. Yeah, it was crazy. And right. you had to pay fifty bucks to be a member of a video just to rent them. It was you like had, a club. You had to, uh, go you had to be a member. Wow. Pay a yearly fee just to rent them for ten bucks for a net two nights and twelve bucks for two nights or something. All that evaporated pretty quickly. It did. <laughs> so, long story short, we, we I grew up uh, when this all happened. I was the first person. My family was the first person in New London, Wisconsin, to have a VHS because we brought it from Milwaukee. Oh we God. we moved from Milwaukee and they didn't even know what it was. <laughs> That's so, so wild. We would bring people over, but we had to drive to Green Bay <laughs> to rent. Because that was the closest video shop. Because oh nobody my in, Lord. In, in Green Bay is a from New London, forty five minutes, like forty five minutes away, just to rent a movie. So how fucking wild is it that you saw? Because I I was born I was born after all this, but you saw basically blockbuster mm-hmm. videos come and go. You're right. Yep. yep. You outlived the lifespan of like an industry, basically. <laughs> Yeah, when and when movie rentals first, like VHS rentals first hit, that was what we did on Friday and Saturday. Yeah. Night. So we would, you know, you go rent two, three movies, and that was the night, man. So yeah, and that if you would have told me, I don't know, thirty years ago or whatever, even well, yeah, more than or less than thirty years ago, fifteen years ago, if you would have been like video rental stores are gone, I would have never guessed that one would be the thing that like came by the wayside. Yeah, I agree. I, agree. I thought maybe they were just... forever. They'll update the technology and then, you know, boom, streaming and just Done. basically like the rental services on my PlayStation now or whatever. Right. Done. There's it's just so dumb. I wonder if they could open up in a nostalgia sense, though. There are there are a few around some that boutique. I found, yeah, but it's, it's got to it, be like cottage yeah. industry. Well, hey, but it's small vi- ones. I mean, vinyl came back, right? Right. And then there was a resurgence of cassette tapes, even for the music industry, where they kind of started to come back. There's a little resurgence on VHS. Yeah. And there are a few in some, I think, like Milwaukee, there's a few that, you know, pop shops that rent, but obviously they're not making new ones. Sure. You ever yeah. see anybody using a red box lately? Because I've seen a guy no. on the road using a red box. I can't believe they have one. I didn't even think it worked. I thought it was just like sitting there from. It's from the <laughs> fallout or whatever, but it's sitting there and somebody was using it. And I was like, what's financial status are you in to use a red box? You're paying to use the red box. So you have enough money for the red box <laughs> and you have stuff to play the DVD, but you don't have an ability to download it. Like, I don't understand. It just like fucks with my brain. It's like, well, you must Were they a little have... older. I don't know. I don't know. You There's know, sometimes. Yeah. To get into the streaming takes a little bit. Yeah, of... my, my parents are probably You're still going to the red box. I right. guess on there. <laughs> they don't. They that's don't wild know. to think about. Yeah, that's true. They don't know how the, they don't want to push anything on the TV to mm-hmm. buy right. anything. Interesting. They weren't like noticeably older, but yeah, it just put my brain into a pretzel. 
well, that happens. It happens to me a lot. Your brain in a pretzel? <laughs> yep. Yeah. Yeah. It continues to be. <laughs> when are you coming back to Chicago? We had such a good time with you in Chicago. <laughs> I don't know. I'd like to come back, though. Yeah. No idea. Dude, that was one of the fucked up nights I've ever been in my life. <laughs> Not going to lie. <laughs> really? We drank a lot. Yeah. Yeah. I, I went, say that. That whole weekend, I went pretty, pretty hard. So that I feel like that night was actually, was that, yeah, that was the night with Chris. Yeah, Castellano or what? Or no, what's yeah, this? yeah, yeah. That was my second night. The first night I feel like was worse. Okay, for me, drunk wise, I'm saying I think I was hungover going into that day. Sure, sure. But because yeah, you were Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Yeah, I think came... I was. I think oh, yeah. you probably caught me at a time that I was. Um... <laughs> there it is, man. Yeah, no Friday. Oh, there it is. Yeah, look at that. <laughs> look at that. I uh, thank I think, you yeah, so much for signing. It Saturday, right? Yeah, we came Saturday shows. Yeah, yeah. Saturday, I was like coasting it's like that point where like you're hung over enough that like a it takes a bunch of beers to like dent you and at that point yeah, yeah, you know yeah. what i'm saying like you're yep. just already like kind of like peaked and then you're like well i gotta drink like eight beers to even get remotely <laughs> yeah <laughs> so yeah i mean i was i was on one that weekend that's like that was pretty like i had just um i had had that surgery earlier in the year I had just been like itching to get out, you know. Yeah, I think because I had to spend a couple of weeks off. So, so yeah, how many I was places really going ham? Um, the like you visit that bars stay open that late. I'm from Buffalo, where it's four a.m. Oh, it is okay. Oh, wow, yeah. I didn't, and that's what I I don't know where else it is. I mean, I know Chicago is open. Buffalo, for... New York City, Chicago, California at all? Anywhere there? Not out here. Nowhere. Which I was gonna say, when we were good, like in Hollywood, dead, all the bars first. closed. It seems early. They closed yeah. at like one. Yeah. Yeah. They seemed earlier. Great for my life. I mean, it's made me healthier. I would be a fucking, <laughs> I would be dead, I think. <laughs> but um, Minnesota is early too. So I know they're those three yeah, hours a night are saving your life. Milwaukee was 2 30. Yeah. Which is standard to us. Yeah. You know, weekends 2 30, you're out, done. Yeah. Goodbye. Yeah, Florida. I want to see probably Miami, but I've not, I don't really. I've never really gone to Miami and done anything. Well, I never actually. I've only gone there for like a football game and stayed like outside of it. Um, yeah, I can't think of anywhere. Else. Maybe some places in Texas, but no, mm-hmm. I can't think of any off the top of my head. But Buffalo is definitely for New York City. They are Florida. okay. Yeah. Okay, so they're like Chicago. Yeah. I mean, I mean four, but I mean, they're we found the places till five and they oh, got yeah. close for like an hour and then they can. Oh, sure. Again. Then there's afters. I mean, yeah. in New York City and in Buffalo, I've spent time in a bar till t- like 10 a.m. I mean, it's oh, like, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's not even like Coke is not even involved. It's just like you're in a basement <laughs> bar and then all of a sudden you're like, what time is it? And then you go outside and the sun's out. And you're oh, like, yeah. But then it's just because, you know, like no bartenders or whatever and then they're like well i might as well just sometimes those bartenders are doing coke and they'll just there was one guy who just would stay he's like well i gotta open at four so he's just like stays there and he, we just stay <laughs> Jesus. With and then we're like well we gotta get out of here might have been like 9 a.m 9 a.m probably it's but still I yeah i got i got home i got home at 10 a.m uh, so i don't remember when we left but it was when we were that night we were in Chicago? Yeah. Yeah, three. I don't know. Three, it was after three. three. Yeah. I was finally... the last one because you guys left and then everyone else left. And then, uh, yeah, and then I left at the uh, end. And I had because I had a flight early. So I was like, I'm just going to oh. fucking. Oh, you stayed. I, sometimes I just go straight through. Yeah. 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 <laughs> go, to, go to the airport. So here, go to the airport. A little cracked up. Oh, I mean, it's a four hour flight. So I'm just like. Never, yeah. uh, yeah. And sometimes I you, mean, you, I get you hear the horror stories, they're like, ah, you're too drunk to come on the flight, blah blah blah. No, but I'm never like, uh, you're really, it takes a bunch for me to get me like, you know, I don't know what the word is, but like, yeah, I don't really display all I drink is beer. It's like, although that night we, I think, shots were had by a couple, but you know, we had a couple shots, did we? Yeah, oh, cool, yeah, we had a couple shots. But for All the most right. part, I just drink beer and it's light beer and I can handle my light beer for the most part. It's like after three hours, the first hours beers are gone anyway. 
right out of your right. system you piss them out you know yeah you start to baseline you're not you're even like... drunk yeah you're just baseline <laughs> exactly yeah. yeah you're just hit you hit that thing and then you're just like well i can keep this pace going for the yeah. remainder yeah so i don't know i know when you started when you came on stage that night i don't know if it was the you said or you're I kind of mentioned that you're well i'm already drunk or something <laughs> well no i mean i was i say you know you try to like foster brooks it a little bit but i okay that's what i was wondering but also i did i mean coming out of covid i just started going crazy and i i don't think i had beers to shotgun in chicago and it became like a thing where i was like all right i'm not gonna do that and then i went up and I just went into my act, which was fine. Everyone laughed and stuff, but I was like, it didn't feel as fun. I think if I remember right, they, Chicago only had glass bottles, so you could. No, I chugged it. So yeah, yeah you so chugged that, one of them. I'm yeah. saying so after the after Thursday night, I go, I got to. So Friday night, I came in, and I did the. I was like, well, I can just chug a Miller Light out of a bottle. It takes a little longer, and it's bubbly. It's like <laughs> right. so not fun, but I can do it. <laughs> and so I was like, I'll just do that. Because I just missed, like, there was something about shotgunning a beer at the start of every show. Like, it's so hack to do it, and I don't really give a shit because I was like, I'm, I sold the tickets. I don't care anymore. I'm not <laughs> precious about it. COVID almost ruined my life, and so I'm doing whatever I want. But there's something like electric about the way the people like cheer when you do that, and then they're already like hyped. You know what I mean? So the yeah. first oh, yeah. joke just hits harder for some reason. Like it's just like. Whereas if you come out there, like, you know, still kind of gearing up to you and they don't, but it, when, it's like you make them make a bunch of noise and then they feel a little less um, inhibited to laugh maybe or something, but it is fucking, it's cheap, but it's something that I go like, it just is something that exists. So I go, I don't fucking care. But it and works. It, it does work. Yeah. <laughs> but anyhow, like you were saying, you came to the late show on Saturday. So I was, I was probably was like, yeah, I had like three beers already or whatever. Yeah. Mm. okay we'll go with three <laughs> <laughs> whatever you want to say well by the end of the by the end of the late show oh yeah absolutely but you killed it i don't know it was funny you were mentioned again like you said maybe foster brooking a little bit but it it uh that's kind of what i was asking but you, you you killed it you nailed it oh thank you oh yeah that's why he to his point you come around we'd come to every show because it's probably your laugh her ass off every time oh that's nice of you yeah believe I me we you, you if you end up in our town we're gonna we're gonna show you the you know the yeah. good places to go we're, we're, i'm gonna we're, try to hit up that skyline place yeah. and they only open till two out there yeah uh 2 30 weekends 2 30 2 30 yeah that's the shitty part after a late show sure you know you're hyped you want to go out and then it's like all right we have an hour yeah <laughs> yeah know? by the time you get some there i mean there's a couple bars right next door so you can be i mean if you're off stage by 11 you can be in there by 11 15 if you want to be sure so oh okay that's cool and and, and downtown's not far right i mean right. We that's can, always yeah. why i end up drinking at the clubs you know yeah or right. like across the street or something well and, and kind of like you said i mean if you have to have an after bar you have to have an after bar you do it works man i sound like a real alcoholic on this show <laughs> well well it's what we do. We do too. <laughs> we do. All right, Every God. week we sound like one. So <laughs> I've asked people, I go, do you think I'm an alcoholic? They're like, you don't drink every day. And I was like, yeah, but when I drink, it's like people like girls have been alarmed by it because <laughs> right. they try to, but it's because they try to keep up. I think. Yeah. That's no. not wise. <laughs> no, that's but I'm not like, you know, my life hasn't been affected negative. I mean, when I was a kid, maybe, but I'm, I'm past that <laughs> so i would go around and people were like no you're not an alcoholic I'm like because these girls keep telling me they're like but i'm like you stop drinking as many drinks as i drink yeah right right in chicago we try to just do one for one just to keep up with getting the rounds and stuff like that so i mean it was it was quick i'm not gonna lie there was it was an it was round after round <laughs> that i recall oh we're ready for another one yeah i better hurry up <laughs> And yeah, you were I mean, talking too, man. You were, you know, you were, you were I talking. Mean, I just, I drink beers. I don't know. It's not a. I don't I'm not like bragging about it or anything. <laughs> but I, I just it's beer. I during pandemic, I learned how to drink. I guess because I was fucking pounding. That was bad. Pandemic. I mean, I was shotgunning beers on Twitch. In fact, I brought Twitch back in July because I'm yeah. just okay. And uh, I've been doing it, but 
I haven't been shotgun. People are like, where's the shotgunning? I'm like, I got sets later. <laughs> I can smoke a bong a couple times, but I can't like get wasted and then go do sets later. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. So it's been people are like, come on. So I got to bring, I got to have just like a shotgun knife, but boy, oh boy, when there was no sets to be had and it was just oh sure switching every day, I was drinking like 12 packs. It's not great. Oh. I was still like, it was, it was, it's not my proudest moment, but at the <laughs> same time, I, uh, you know, I became a little conditioned, I guess. But that would be a, a great promo is to be like shotgun night. That is. Yeah. I'm going to do that. For That's sure. awesome. Yeah. See if you can keep up with the roach. Oh. <laughs> yeah i guess there is just something where after a while i just go like what am i doing <laughs> like you know what i mean like people are just watching me shot it's like when do i get like my razor i that's why i'm like working out too before i do it because that's like if i just keep getting fat on there as i shotgun beers people are like oh man it's getting sad it's like an <laughs> episode of black mirror where it like just shifts just like, <laughs> now they're just watching me decay there, there's there's gambling going on about how fat you'll get before you die. <laughs> used, to, used to do the road. Look at him. Then they're just tuning in to see like how bad it gets. <laughs> and they're placing bets. When will he? Yeah. Well, when will he actually die? Right. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> they're placing bets on how much food I'll eat that night. But no, I keep it right. I keep it right and tight so far, lifestyle wise. Despite the, I think that's the only thing that's made my physique what it is is beer because I don't eat very bad and. Well, you don't eat at all, do you? Not really, yeah. <laughs> so it's all beer. A girl said, she goes, uh, you eat or you drink your dinner. Yeah. And I go, oh, okay. Yeah. I remember I in high school, we'd always say there's a pork chop in every can of beer or something yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really? Yeah. Is it that, like that much? I I don't know if it's true. That we just remember <laughs> saying it in high school. Pro, you want I your drink protein? light beer, so it's Miller Lite, so it's only like a half a pork chop. It's a, it's a half a pork chop. Half a pork yeah, chop. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well, so like, I don't know. In high school, we just drank the cheapest shit we could get. Right. You know, I mean, yeah. we didn't care what it was. Yeah, I mean, I I still have like, like every now and then I'll see one in the gas station or something. Like, a, we used to have Keystone Light. Hell yeah! And that would be like the cheapest thirty rack that you could find. It was yeah. like I want to say, dude, this is insane. But this was the year like two thousand and six, two thousand seven. I want to say a 30 rack of that cost eight ninety nine. Is that crazy? <laughs> no, it can't be that cheap, right? It, no, it could, no, you're can... right. I think you're you're on target. I really do. Because bush bush light thirties you can get for like fifteen bucks, can't you? No, yeah. Yeah. So, so yeah, back then I think so. Know, this is we switched it twenty Keystone years ago because it it came out. Wasn't that the one that the bitter face? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, Don't... Keystone was I mean, I have just like, like their initial ad campaign was about the bitter face and the commercials were always people drinking yeah. other beer and they'd have that really bitter. F- <laughs> yeah. But you got the good beer for a good cost. Yeah, but Keystone was just, oh, I mean, Rash. I don't oh, know yeah. if it's because I just like it's synonymous with solo cups and puking for me. Like <laughs> it was just the beer pong beer. I mean, that was what we would get for beer pong, too, because it was like you had to have a bunch of beer. Right. So you buy the cheapest ones. So just be like, that and uh Beast Ice was the other <laughs> beer pong beer because we would be like it'd get us drunk quicker. Which ice? Milwaukee's Beast. Milwaukee's but Milwaukee's best. Oh, the Beast. Yeah, oh, the Beast right. Ice. Yeah. Called it Beast Ice. Yeah, I forgot uh, it is Milwaukee. So yeah, you guys must have that. Coming yeah, Milwaukee's out of your ass best. Yeah, yeah. When, we got so much shit beer in this state. <laughs> when Bud came out with Bud Ice. Oh yeah. I that to me was like the I love that taste of that beer. But that gets oh, that one was so too t- that taste fucked me up. We did we tried to do a power hour on New Year's Eve with yeah. Bud Ice. Yeah, it was there's something about it that was like nutty. Oh, me. like in taste, it was too that makes too sense much now. Yeah, to do a power hour. I didn't I did not enjoy it for this power. And I had to like we all we both bowed out before we were even drunk because we we're just like this is not the best beer to do shots of. <laughs> oh, that's so weird. Oh, um, no, I I I. When that came out, we would I would drink it. That was some of the drunkest I ever got and hung over ever from Bud Ice. So I don't know if I just drank more because it was so good or if it really fucked me. I'd never figured that out. Well, but yeah, I, I mean, there's more alcohol in those ice. That's the whole like. Is it? Oh. Branding behind them, like all the like ice. That just means like. I just don't remember. Was it more, more alcohol? Higher, per, higher percentage or whatever. Uh, yeah. Then it was that because I. That's why we would get the beast ice because we'd be like, what a bargain. 
<laughs> yeah. Okay. I don't. Yeah. Mm. That's the, the power hours. The shot a minute, right? The power hours a shot a minute, but yeah. for yeah, beer pong, beast ice. There's some. I was the Keystone would make me like if I tried it right now, I'd probably puke out of just like having like trauma <laughs> come back to me. But beast ice, cold. There's like this crispness to it that it just yeah. like sucks me back. I hear like the spill canvas playing or something. Like I get real like there's something nostalgic about it. Yeah. I really enjoyed Beast Ice as opposed to Keystone. I would I wonder if they it would be the same make... price too. It would be like 13 bucks, I think, for a 30. I, I don't do know. they still make any of the ice stuff? I don't think they do, do they? I don't think they do. I think they do. I've seen like oh, yeah? ice. Oh, maybe okay. not. Maybe they had to get rid of that. That's like, you know, when they had to make cigarettes, like they can't be called light or whatever, you know? Yeah. Sure, possibly. I don't know, but I well, thought but... that I don't seek these those beers out anymore. <laughs> right. so well, I got a job, so I don't have to. I don't have to seek <laughs> yeah. these beers out anymore. So yeah, I mean, I still drink Miller Light. Don't get me wrong, but I don't go like <laughs> I need to get more fucked up. Like that's not the goal anymore. You know what I mean? We would do old Milwaukee returnable bottles. <laughs> Jesus mm. Christ! So we could bring the the sick the, the case back, get dollars towards it and always had a re- are they uh, not re- all returnable not every well you had to get the the old time bottles of returnable oh i see then so you had to keep it but you couldn't you had to have a full case you you know so you you couldn't chuck them you couldn't you had to keep them oh yeah we do i mean that's what people do with returnable bottles and cans anyway don't they do you guys not have that in your state not anymore do, don't i don't you? think we do i don't think we have it i You're don't know not on not the, the fucking lid for the returnables oh no not not you get money back it was it was oh it's like a it was a case of bottles 24 once you not were for like a nickel you know like no you, you, were... you take it back and you'd get so much off your next case of old milwaukee oh bottles. that's wild okay and then you got a like a and... rebate for like yes yeah. it was the beginning of recycling right i so thought you... you meant that's interesting i thought you meant like returning it for like change like people do at the grocery store or whatever yep you like, see that don't people top, keep certain states right yeah, we don't yeah, do that yeah. in wisconsin Mm-mm. get I a nickel i saw you on there i don't think so i don't if it is we... <laughs> i missed it my whole life well you <laughs> thank you for fucking up our climate for not returning i don't know i can't see i don't I, I mean i i don't even know i wish i could tell you i did that still but uh I don't even know if you can do it in California. I'm sure you can. I can't, I can't even read the cans, so <laughs> forget it. It's too small. I'm not going to try to discern. Yes. I ashed. I used it as an ashtray, so it's got ash on it. So hey, you got to remember though, this was in the the 80s when we were doing this. Oh, I see. They weren't still. They weren't like reduce, reuse. No, no. Recycle. This was this was back. I mean, this came from like the 50s and 60s where you could return your bottles and yeah, yeah you get like... whatever. But yeah, so I did Adam Carolla's show today and we talked about like AIDS in the 80s. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like yeah. that was like the whole conversation. <laughs> we talked about the Rock Hudson documentary, which was fun. It was so fun. I had a great time. I, I hope he thinks I was like good or whatever. So I don't know. We'll see. It comes out tomorrow or whatever. Oh, it comes oh out- really? Shit. I was like, when we were, t- we were talking about in the <laughs> intro, I'm like, He's doing Corolla now, but he's doing ours after. But ours will come out first because it's going to come out next Monday. Now you're telling me Corolla is going to come out tomorrow already? He, he does. He does one every day. Oh shit! Really? Yeah, he does it like it's radio still. Holy! But God. he does it like when he wants to do it. Okay. Well, good. And it's very know. much like a radio show. And I, I got kind of like cocky because I was like, I do this, you know. But like, he kept me in there for a Les Claypool interview, and I was like, Am I supposed to chime in on this? Like. <laughs> I didn't know it was happening. I couldn't do like less Claypool prep, you know. I, you know, I, <laughs> was... I know the basics, but like, yeah, I have nothing to ask. I I remember Les Claypool was a guy that would like come up on our radar for like morning radio and stuff like that. And the other producer, I'd always give it, not give it. Like the other producer was my boss technically, and he would be like more amped about it, so he wouldn't like have me do any prep on it, and I wouldn't give a shit. I wouldn't listen to it or anything like that. So like. It's just because I wasn't at like a ginormous. So it was just random. I'm like, oh, Les Claypool's. He's like uh, on Zoom for like a segment. Okay. And I'm in there. So I'm just sitting there like silent, just kind of watching the show, which I felt like such a fucking idiot. And I wonder if he like is pissed about that at all. I don't know. I didn't know. I'm like, do I try? I'm like looking am around. Like, is somebody am I supposed to be in here still? Like, ah, was that, uh, So at any point, was it just you? 
No, it was me and in uh, in Corolla. Well, yeah, no, I was on the show alone with him for a majority of it. But gotcha. Okay, but when that started, and, and the and his co-host. Uh, but yeah, then that was like part of it. That was like mm. uh, twenty minutes or something like that. Okay, okay, good. I was <laughs> I was kind of wondering, like, kind of like when we were on that, we went to Chicago for that radio show. Yeah. Same thing happened. We they invited us down to this radio show, and we went on, and they kind of said, "Well, we're gonna have." Um, Artemis Payne. Artemis Payne, come on, Leonard, call, Leonard Skinner's drummer. <laughs> mm. Call in, and they're like, "Yep." And it kind of was, yeah. If you got a question, ask them. And then they start talking. We're like, what? we're looking at each other, like, well, we don't know what to say. You're in a flow. You're you're the host. I'm not gonna lie. I hadn't heard Artemis Payne's name until that day. I didn't know who <laughs> Artemis Payne was. So I didn't. I didn't have a question for Artemis. <laughs> oh, I didn't either. I th- well, we thought a- it was gonna be. Are in Spain, and then we'll come on. And then you're like, no, yeah. put the headphones on now. Let's go. We'll just do it together. And we're like, what? Um... <laughs> well, not only did I just think like. So we're my, in the same. Yeah. I was like, you know, I don't know if I'm supposed like Adam Curl has been doing radio at a right. high level since I've been alive. So it's <laughs> like it was fun to get in there with like one of the greats and try and like. And I just was playing sniper because I didn't because he was just like he goes like. And it's it's like a double Dutch game to try and join in. But when it comes Perfect. to an interview, it's like, does he want me chiming in? Does he? So aside from that, though, Les Claypool, I have nothing. If it was somebody right. that I like, perhaps was like, oh, and then uh, someone that I like thought about in the last <laughs> five. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. oh, I'm with you. Yeah, we were the same. I would have been able to be like, oh, yeah, I have a question. But like, or it would have been fun to like impress him with some sort of knowledge about, you know, whatever. <laughs> But this was somebody that I just was so indifferent about anyways. So yeah. it was like, I'm not going to disrupt Adam Carolla's Les Claypool interview by just trying to like be a part of this when I have no interest in it at all either. So, right. I and was that was like, it hundred percent where they were yeah. t- to your point, they were such pros. They were boom, boom, boom. And they didn't want any dead air. So they're going, yeah. we're like, when, when do you say something? And you know, what did you say? The double Dutch to jump in when was the right time? We had no idea. Asking, you know, hey, you ask. get a rhythm with people, but then, like I said, I'm a guest on the show. Les right. Claypool is another guest. He's only on for a small amount of time. Yeah, they kept me in the room. Does that mean they want? You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. but I have, but for me to just do that in the sake of doing it would have been, like I said, for the sake of doing it. So, I I had nothing interesting to ask Les Claypool. One hundred percent, same thing. And I did, cause... and it, it's not like it's not like you can go. Well, that's because you're, you know, blah, blah, blah. I had no idea he was going to be <laughs> on the show. So I had no like prep time. I could have found something interesting to ask. Right. Yeah. That people. doesn't help either. So, <laughs> yeah. No, no, I'm saying like, I, you know, anybody who's like, well, you should as a pro or whatever, no, have something interesting no. to say. And it's like, no, I wasn't going to derail their conversation. Yeah. And at one point, I've never we been like... on the show before. I don't know how he does interviews. I don't know how, you know. Right. At one point, you know, in my head, I'm like, well, well, they said to chime in. So I'm like, what am I supposed to say? He's like, well, how'd you feel after the crash? You know? <laughs> yeah, that was a good one. <laughs> you know, we're like, um, because he's one of the surviving members. We're like, ah, he's been asked this a hundred times. I probably they... would have asked only plank crash questions. <laughs> right, I, wouldn't right, been, right. I wouldn't even know so, which band was it again. Yeah, I wouldn't have even cared. So what was your feeling when you're going down? And I wouldn't even crash. plugged him as from the band. I would have been like from a plane crash. That's how I would have introduced him. <laughs> this guy survived a plane crash and now he's on our show. Yeah, that's the <laughs> Which impressive he did. part. Yeah. And, uh, and, and he got shot. Crazy. And he got shot. Oh my God. So yeah. the plane crashed. I don't remember if everybody died or two people survived. Two people survived. He had to crawl himself wounded to a farmhouse and he's like farmhouse. I want to get help. A farmer thought he was uh, stealing, so he starts shooting at him. <laughs> oh my god! So he's like, "No, I just, I just crashed in a plane, and now you're shooting at me." And I think he got shot. Actually, he did. Oh my god! And then he's yeah, and he's still. Smart. But that, to be fair, that is disputed. There are people that say that's a lie. I so oh, never let him have it. Let him have. Yeah, uh, he <laughs> survived the plane crash. If he wants to add the detail the of getting <laughs> shot, then I don't see that it being such a problem. Oh, if he yeah. was, it's like why would he add that? Right, he survived a plane crash. That's an interesting enough story. Yeah. He doesn't need to throw in the added lie of the True. gunshot. 
It's got so much work. So, anyways, I'm not comparing to you, but we yeah, were, yeah, we're, we didn't know what to do. Well, I didn't. We were, we didn't. Mm-mm. But, anyways, it's 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 fun to be on. Other than that, how was Adam? It was great. I, no, I mean, he, even that was great. It was just like I just felt like it was a decision I had to make where I yeah. go. But I don't know. So how did how did the AIDS how did eighties AIDS come up? <laughs> he watched the Rock Hudson documentary, so oh. He brought that up, and I wish I had watched that. I've been watching a lot of documentaries, but I hadn't watched that one. Well, that's what uh, I mean. It would have been nice prep to be able to watch it and talk about it. But No, I know, but I, I know enough about Rock Hudson where I knew the sure grander themes yeah. of where he was going with things. So, I mean, there was enough about that. But it was just funny to bring that. The, you're t- we're talking 80s stuff, and yeah. I was like, oh, I just talked about AIDS for, <laughs> for it was hour. very funny. It was a lot of fun and very funny. It is like old school because like he is so uh, old school. So it was fun to just like, you go, oh yeah, this is an actual, bro. I can say fuck and stuff. Still. You know what I mean? Or yeah. Wild shit. I don't, it's on, he makes it seem like radio. Mm-hmm. He even takes like broad breaks. Like he'll, you know, he'll be oh. like, we'll be right back and stuff like that. Okay. And uh, you're like, am I on the air right now? And I don't know. <laughs> I don't think they are. I don't know if they are. Maybe they are. But um, <laughs> yeah, it was interesting. So I'd imagine it, maybe not you or him, but him, that there's probably some point where you couldn't talk about AIDS of the eighties. One of those, it's too soon. Cause... Oh, I mean, yeah. I mean, he was, I mean, I think he graduated high school in like 80. I think oh. he said he graduated in like 82 or something. So, so maybe, maybe I'm making, making him old, older than he is. Yeah. He didn't start at radio till like the nineties. So, Oh, yeah, and then by good. then you could joke about it. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> they the were 90s. doing it. Trust me. <laughs> So I studied it then. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They were joking about you were in radio for, sure. for a lot of years. Not in the 90s. <laughs> no, <laughs> but you, you got into the radio. So, yeah. So, in throughout your thing of comedy, what what subjects were off limits right away for a while well, that you yeah. had to like events like um, that? There's you, nothing. I mean, so you, it's your career, you're like, there's nothing off limits. No, I mean, the first person to do it always was like Gilbert Gottfried or something like that. I mean, it was like, people are, we're racing to do it. Are you kidding me? I mean, <laughs> go to an open mic, you're going to be like, oh, when something happens, you're like, it's going to be 18 fucking joke. And then you go see like, okay, this is the treaded angles that are just getting over and over again used. And by like two weeks out, you figure it out. And then no one gives a shit that it's too soon anymore. Oh, Okay. <laughs> Maybe it's just the mainstream because you hear that all the time, you know, too soon. Too how soon. long? Yeah. How long before how you talk about nine eleven or something? Yeah. yeah. No yeah, one's like no one's uh, 9/11 really saying Holocaust. too soon. If someone actually says too soon in a genuine way, <laughs> they're usually going to be too simple to understand the rest of it anyway. So it's like, you're better. You better get out of here. Well, it's I don't think it's ever genuine when they say too soon. They, but, they, they that's what I'm say saying. It. Like. Yeah. Some people just say it as like, because they're trying to protect themselves from laughing. They're like, oh, mm. you know, they just kind of make that part of the joke. But that's not a real thing that anyone actually. Do some people any, have said it, but. Do you have any like real bad heckler stories? You know, like these people that are, you know, have you been on stage? and Not really. I mean, I don't really engage too, too much with the crowd, but like, I just kind of talk and they laugh, hopefully. But I, um. <laughs> I did have one incident, like it was like the worst headlining set of my life. And it was because the crowd came thinking they were seeing Michael Ian Black and he got sick. Oh. And so the club knew I was in town and called me. And I just went up like I was doing a show in front of the people that know who I am. Yeah. And they did not like it. There was like people hissing at me and booing. <laughs> Wait, I actually actual hissing? Does, does somebody there was is that a thing? literal like... hissing? Yes. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> You hear Literally hissing all day, but hissing. somebody actually goes. And I, I, that's what I couldn't believe it. I was like, oh, my God, I'm doing that bad. So <laughs> and it was because I said something about John Lennon. <laughs> Jeez. I don't know. Dead forever. <laughs> <laughs> right? And this is in, like, 2019. <laughs> and uh, they're booing and shit. And then, like, I just eat it and get off stage, like, maybe even too early. Like, maybe five minutes too early, even. Just because it was bad. And the one of the waitresses, um, she audio recorded a lady complaining 
to the manager about me, who's one of my best friends. So like he was he was like laughing about it. So like I have tape of this lady like saying to the manager, like, he needs to be reported. Like I am concerned about this man, stuff like that, like wild shit like that. And I made it like a promo video <laughs> at the time. Is that not the way to all my dates it all, embrace it and just say hey, hell yes? I'm so go. glad. Shout out to that waitress. I'm not going to say her name because she still works. Sure. Here, so. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, bril- brilliant on her to start recording that. Like, yeah, right. You got gold right there. So now that um, is it? I've so, somewhere I heard that like you're supposed to play an hour, but if you leave an early, they don't have to pay <clears throat> you the full amount. You don't need to. You can just do 45 minutes, but. The hours, what you try to do, but there is no, they're not like they're a dick if they say you didn't do the. No, full. it's not like they're count. They're not like they're with a stopwatch. I mean, half the time they don't even really know it, but like they know when you're like, if you come off during the check drop, they're gonna realize it. You know what I'm saying? Or like, <laughs> but I, I thought I, I thought there was a comedian. I watched something where the guy was like, I. It was going bad, so I left, and also they're like, well, you didn't play the full, so I'm not paying you or something like that. Well, I mean, people can be dicks like that you are contracted to do a certain amount of time but like no club is really like it depends if it's two minutes no one's fucking if it's like five minutes sure. like if it's like 20 minutes then they go hey come on you know like okay. i've seen it happen where headliners who are like not famous or whatever go up and they are doing bad and they bail like super early and the club's like uh did that just happen and then <laughs> On the next show, they it's not like they dock them their pay though or anything. Not, okay. not that I've seen. I'm sure oh, there's but... horror stories or whatever, but yeah, it, w- it was like a a clip of someone talking about it. I don't. Anyways, I it why that that popped in my head for some reason. I'm sure it's happened to some people for sure. Yeah, you uh you took a you were at the mothership, weren't you? Yeah, I've been there a couple times. Yeah how how is it? It it's looks amazing. The best. I mean, it's incredible. <laughs> it's amazing. Yeah, yeah, it's. It's incredible. And it's all very like, new and fresh. You know, everything's new. So it's got like same vibes as like an old timey comedy club because you see all your friends there, but it's all fucking brand new shit. So gotta make that trip one. Lot, yeah. That's that's one of the chips. Yeah. Austin. Yeah, that'd be fun. Isn't there like I mean there's like five or six comedy clubs all within walking distance of each other? <laughs> yeah, yeah, there's uh well like the Vulcan is like a it's like a rock club that they were doing comedy in yeah. before the mothership opened up and they still do shows there a bunch during the week. And that's on sixth street. And then you go down a little bit, it's the mothership. And then you go down a little bit more and it's red bands got a club. Yeah. Which is just basically like a fun, it's like a, it's also very nice inside, but it's like retro y as opposed to the mothership, which everything is like brand new. So it's cool vibes. And, uh, Pretty much the same. I mean, the comics just go down the street and do that shit too. So it's like, you know, the spillover. If you can't get into the mothership, go might as well go there. And then around the corner is the creek and the cave. And uh there's also Cap City, but that's like out in the suburbs a little bit. And there's a couple other places that I don't even never even heard of before that people talk about, but sure. You got you gonna pack up and move down there next? No, I'm not going down there. You are you're an LA guy for good. I'm not an LA guy for good, but I'm not moving there either. Yeah, yeah. No, if I move again, it'll well when I move again. Back to Boston? Be, it, no, no, oh. I'm not from Boston either. I'm from Buffalo, but I wouldn't. Buff- I would I, move like uh, that's my fuck up. I'm. Sorry. I would I like meant, to. I no, that's Buffalo. Okay. I meant Buffalo. <laughs> that's, I'm only saying because Boston is like you know the Patriots. <laughs> I would, not from there. No, I, I, and uh, that's why I'm a, apologizing because i understand the fuck up i did and how how insulting that was and i apologize i'd like to move back there to buffalo but i'd move you know i'd look at some other i mean if i were going to move again it would be just wherever i was convenient and i enjoyed but uh i don't i'm not going to move down i i can visit down there and get as many sets as i want and spend as much time down there as i like and I don't need to live there to like truly uh, experience it. You know, it's better. I I find it better to visit. 
So I'm sure I'm sure a bunch of people hit you up, but you had to have heard Tom talking about wanting to make a special for you. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. No, I mean, we've been talking about that for years. I mean, yeah. I'm happy he said it publicly. Yeah, <laughs> I am too. I was like, because yeah. at first I thought it wasn't going to happen. I was like, <laughs> I mean, I still might. I mean, who knows? But I mean, him saying it publicly makes it a little more like I'm not sounding crazy when I have been like yeah. talking about this privately to my friends or whatever. But um, yeah, I mean, we'll see. I mean, we're he's obviously like been so busy on the road and then he just got off it and he had his special come out the number on one Fourth special on netflix right now yeah and so he's doing all the <laughs> press for that and so like the second the guy can get a second to breathe i guess maybe we'll talk about it but uh i know once like things you always think like oh things will calm down for him or whatever but they just get they he's just like uh, he's hardcore man it was awesome seeing you back on ymh too that was cool yeah, that's fun. I mean, I'm glad I got to do that. I'm gonna do I, on the on Lauren's uh, podcast coming up here too. So, oh, okay, yeah, she's yeah, is that first date thing or something? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yep. The new, it's kind of new. Yeah, and they're pushing it, so it's yeah. it seems funny the clips I watch. I haven't watched a full episode, but I watched. Yeah, it's clips. brand new. It's I think it's only on its like third episode. So yeah. Oh, so that, have, you, yeah. have you already wow. done your episode? Yeah, I already taped it. Okay. I don't know when it comes out though. Cool, cool. Pretty, I, I think like. This in a couple of weeks, I don't know. Sure. So she's tapping a bunch of comedians, and yeah. it's just awesome. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I didn't realize. Okay, I thought they were. Um, I knew it was new, and just watch clips, and it's coming great. So yeah. I, and it just talked about dating, huh? Yeah, I mean, it's like she has the, the she has like a whole format with it about dating, and like it's like she's she's on a date with you, and she's asking you questions. It's uh, it's cute. Oh, okay. That's funny. Yeah, Ron White just did it, I, I guess. Th- so. Or Ron White's episode just came out. I went nice. in and I shot it with me and Annie went in when we were in San Antonio. We went together and um, hers already came out, but they told me mine wouldn't come out till like July, later in July. So, I mean, we're getting to the midway point. So it's got to be the next couple of weeks. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. And I I just saw the Ron White clip. That was pretty funny. She's really natural. Yeah, she's great. Yeah, I mean, like when she's on camera and stuff, she's yeah. just very natural and just <clears throat> he's like she's time. having a blast for sure. What is you as well? <laughs> what happened? Oh, you're drinking. Everyone drink at the same time. Everybody's <laughs> drinking at the same time. We're yep. like, hold on. <laughs> the awkward silence hits the room because we're drinking. That we happened on a, a on a on a are you garbage? I feel like we all drink at the same time. <laughs> it was because we were like, ooh. <laughs> That's all right. Just edit that shit right out. You just go boop boop. Never happened. Hilarious. Never happened, but that's all right. Oh, all right. So you're going uh where are you going next? Uh, I'm going to Vegas next week. Oh no. where, are you, where are you playing in Vegas? <laughs> oh fun. Uh wise guys. God, it's been a long time since I've been to Vegas. It's Annie's birthday show, so. We're going oh, out for her birthday. Right. You're cool with okay. Annie, literally Annie just uh, for people who are dumb. <laughs> yeah, literally just to do a show to like subsidize the birthday. <laughs> like so she, you know, oh, might as well that's... make might as well make some money while we go to Vegas for her 40th birthday. So or I don't even know if she wants to say the age. 39. I'm sorry. Don't put it out there. Be 29. 29. Yeah. 29. Definitely. I'm sure she doesn't care. I think she talks about it, but I don't know. But you got a couple dates with her coming up, don't you? Uh, that's pretty much it. And then just and okay. then Skank Fest. I have to go back to Vegas for Skank Fest in September. And then, yeah, I don't know. There's a Pennsylvania and a bunch of other places down in the fall. So go, go it's just it. so far away that I don't even fucking. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. This is the immediate I mean... future. Vegas. How fun would that be? I know. We got to get back. It'd be fun to go for some comedy shows. Yeah, I even I had I gave Adam Carolla my dates, and we he I, he's like, let's see, you're going to uh, and he looks and I'm like, yeah, it's down the road, and he's like, <laughs> yeah, well, just go just go check out his dates. Because <laughs> it was like, it was it's a little too about. early. Yeah, well, I got I got to tell you, we podcast that comes out too tomorrow. We definitely I'm, appreciate like, you up dates from October. <laughs> 
We definitely appreciate you telling Adam Carolla you had to go to get on another podcast. I mean, I mean definitely appreciate <laughs> oh, yeah, no it. Problem. <laughs> Which well, no, we'll reach out to Adam. Great. See what's going on. Come yeah. on, Adam. <laughs> it's funny. I, I was talking, I met Ryan Sickler on Saturday night, and I, uh, yeah. I was talking to him about I, I'm trying hard to get him to do the podcast. And, oh, yeah. Uh, he's, he, he's like, you know who you should ask? Adam Carolla. He'll do any podcast. I'm like, will he really? That's weird. I should have asked him to do mine while I was there. <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah. Man. So well, maybe I have his, uh, his co host email, but or that like I went through his co host, who's kind of his producer, I guess. So, like, would he be offended if I asked him to have Adam Carolla on my podcast, but not him? I don't know. That's the mm-hmm. thing with co hosts. No, uh, believe me, believe me. If you want me on the Josh Potter show and you don't want him, <laughs> I'm fine with that. I, nobody's offended. <laughs> and vice versa. That's hilarious. Yeah, we're saying we don't have to be a, a team package. We're good. I get it. If you want to lose the dead weight, <laughs> I get it. <laughs> so, who do you got coming up on the on the Potter show? Do you got any? You do. You, yeah, how far out do you book guests? I'm curious about that. Do you like? Do you know? You um, I have some people like lined up, but the dates are floating, so I don't know if they're gonna. It's not like confirmed, but um, sure. Who's on tomorrow's? Oh, Justin Martindale comes out tomorrow. Nice. He's, he's and, a fun guest uh, for you. Yeah. I'll tease it. Joe List is gonna be on the next episode. Nice. Nice. Cool. Yeah. yeah this will come out. This will come out next Monday. So that one will be. Yeah. So the next episode will be Joe List then. For so two everybody. days from now. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Two days from now. Yeah, two two days from now being two, yeah well, no. yes <laughs> his two days. I get now. what you're saying. He comes out on Wednesday. This will come out. Yeah, 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 yeah. I get what you're saying. Did you switch to Wednesdays just to give yourself an extra day to edit or something? What what what? Yeah, pretty much. That? Okay. Basically, my staff was like, "We need another day," and I was like, yeah. <laughs> "Fine," because yeah. I wanted it. To, I wanted to tape it like I was tape at at the time. I was taping it Monday like afternoon. And it was coming out like Tuesday morning. Yeah. And I guess that's hard to do. I don't know. So, I mean, <laughs> maybe it's not, but also like, you know, it's someone's life. So I just was like, yeah, I can stand putting it back a day. Like they, the, my other, my like executive, executive producer, like came up to me and was like, what do you think? She like came out. I think she might've flown out here to have a conversation with me. That's how like awesome Serious she was. They, were. they were. She uh, was like, can we switch to Wednesdays? And I was like, yeah, I guess <laughs> <laughs> it makes it easier, I guess. Yeah. I was uh, you, I mean, I assume for your episodes, you don't edit much out. I mean, you're no, pretty not much really at all. Yeah. So it's probably just adding graphics and shit. Unless it's a are. technical thing or like, you know, maybe one or two, like, um, you know, just the videos, like, you know, buffering or whatever yeah. the hell, stuff like that. Sure. But, that's it. I was going to say from watching yours, it seems very just straight. It doesn't seem like there's a lot of cuts to yeah. it. Right yeah. I mean, so. unless there's like, unless like guests, I mean, I really haven't had any guests be like, I have to take this part out or anything like that. So, I mean, that really hasn't or doesn't happen, but if they wanted it to, I would do that. You know, yeah. it's the yeah. only time. I'm just going to ask if you ever had a guest say, you know, I thought back and not, could you not put this part out? No, not really. Okay. I don't think that's ever happened. Hey, we recorded a whole new episode I, I with would somebody. That. <laughs> we we yes, to this point. Oh, we, I could. I bet we yeah. did a whole new. They just, no, I think I can guess which one. No, I'm just kidding. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes. Oh. We were happy to do it. It just that's where that's what it was fresh in our mind because we just yeah, kind of did it. So that's why I was asking. Yeah, sure. It just got to be. No, so it's happened. I've heard of that it, happening to a lot of podcasts, and I've had friends that have gone like. If they do a podcast that is um like almost like they're doing the favor by being on the podcast, I've seen them go and do that before. You know, where yeah. they go like, we have to do this over again. Well, to be fair, everybody that's ever been on our podcast is doing a favor to us. <laughs> <laughs> we have never done more for our guests than our guests have done for us. <laughs> hey now. I'm just saying. Uh, we are we are lucky with someday yeah someday someday Someday. Someday we'll favors we're always favors come back we're on our way we've uh (laughs) we've cleared that hundred dollar mark with youtube so we've made our first hundred dollars so hell yeah (laughs) we're we're growing man we're going 
Hell yeah. Look at you. Full, st- full steam ahead. And it's thanks nice. to people like you because you're awesome. And we really appreciate you doing this not once, but twice. No problem. I hope I can bump it up a few cents, huh? Yeah. There you go. There and, you and go. Actually, you're right. 100%. It is thanks to guests like you that are awesome. 100%. Oh, thank you. And obviously, the invite is always open anytime you want to come back. You just tell us. I mean, I'll, oh, I'll thank you. Yeah, no, you keep, again. Keep bugging me. I mean, I don't mind. <laughs> thank you for having me. Yeah. Well, here's the bottom line is when that yeah. special does come out. Right, 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 right. <laughs> then we want to promote the shit out of that. <laughs> oh, sure. We'll do that. Yeah. I mean, 100%. I mean, I'm sure why Angel <laughs> will we'll let you promote there, but you know. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. I mean, when it does, if it does, we'll see what happens. I'll talk then. Well, it should. Let's, let's just put it that way. Uh, yeah, it let's other other than a podcast mention, let's see what else happens. <laughs> you know, like... <laughs> yeah. All right. So um before we go, yeah. How's uh how's how's the t shirt of ours fit you? <laughs> oh I mean, I think I didn't I tell you like I didn't get it when I saw you? Or you, you oh. gave me the other or did you give me the other one? The one that came in the mail. Remember I said I went to the other studio, the Santa Monica one, and they never Oh, you never got it? The All UPS, right, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I thought I told you that in Chicago. Okay. But, uh, well, we'll set well, you Well, if you did, you remember we got brain dead before yeah, the evening was done. I don't oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. anything <laughs> about that night. So I we will... I brought it up in Chicago because I was like, I would have brought it. We will but, send uh, you another one. If we... Yeah. For sure, because I talked to Kristen on Saturday, and I want to send her one as well. So. Oh, okay, cool. So we'll, we'll just send a couple along. So. Well, wherever you send it to her, she's, you know, going to get it for me. So. Okay. Cool. Oh, okay. Well, we'll tell her. We'll to, let's do that. Tell her to check her messages. I messaged her, and she did. So okay, cool. I'll tell her for sure. We'll send her one. We'll get you another one. We'll get you one properly. Awesome. But you got to wear it on the podcast at least once. Oh, I definitely would do that. <laughs> <laughs> or we won't do it. Yeah, right, right. Fuck that. We'll we'll fuck that. <laughs> Thank you so much, Josh. We appreciate. No it. problem, dudes. Talk to you later. All right. All right. Have a good night. Peace out, man. Cool. Have a good night. You too. Thank you for listening. The tavern is closed for now, but we'd love to have you back for more fun next time. Seriously, though, get your asses out of here.